Hi, I'm Kristen Hintz with the Ottawa County Parks Nature Center at Emlock Crossing. Spring is a wonderful time to explore what plants are blooming in the forest before the trees leaf out. In this short video, I will be focusing on some of the characteristics that you can look and photograph to help you identify the wildflowers that you see on your walks. The three characteristics are the type of flower, the arrangement of leaves, and the leaf margin. Let's look at the flower first. Flowers can be split into two groups, regular and irregular. Regular flowers are radially symmetrical. This means that their petals or sepals, which are petal-like parts, are arranged around the center like the spokes of a wheel. Each petal or petal part is similar in size, shape, and color. If the petals are united, like in bell-shaped flowers, the lobes of the flower are also similar in size, shape, and color. Be careful, some flowers are grouped together in a head or spike. So to determine whether it's regular or not, you will have to isolate a single individual flower and examine that. It's also important to count the number of petals or petal parts around the disc. This will be important information later on. Irregular flowers are not radially symmetrical. The petals or petal parts are not similar in size or shape. Usually these flowers have a lower lip like you see in violets or plants in the pea family. Here we have spring cress. The flower has four petals arranged around a central disc and they are the same size, shape, and color. This is an example of a regular flower. Here are two examples of irregular flowers. Although the violet's petals seem to circle around a central area, the petals are not the same shape or size. The Dutchman's breeches is a great example of a flower without radial symmetry. Now let's focus on the leaves. Leaves growing from the base of the plant are known as basal leaves. Leaves growing above the base are called stem leaves. They can be arranged alternately or arranged directly opposite each other. Leaves growing in circles around a stem in threes, fours, fives, or more are called world. If there is only one stem leaf, then it is considered an alternate arrangement. Knowing whether a plant has basal leaves or how the leaves are arranged along the stem are important characteristics to notice while looking at a wildflower. To determine whether a type of leaf is entire, toothed, or lobed, you need to look at the leaf margin. The leaf margin is the edge of a leaf. If the margin of a leaf is unbroken, then the, the leaf is called entire. If the margin has regular, shallow indentations, then the, the leaf is called toothed. Toothed leaves can have wavy or scalloped edges or edges with pointed teeth, like this one here. If the indentations are deeper and separate the leaves into sections, the leaf is termed lobed. Leaves that are only lobed at the base, such as heart-shaped leaves, will actually be termed as either entire or toothed, depending upon their leaf margins. An example of this is the violet. A divided leaf is actually divided into separate parts known as leaflets. Each illustration on this slide is an example of one leaf. Let's take a look at the wild strawberry leaf circled in red. This leaf is made up of three leaflets. Leaves like the dandelion leaf on the far right, where the indentation goes almost to the midrib, are considered to be divided. Now let's take a look at some real examples. This wildflower is called cut-leaved toothwort, and its name accurately describes its leaves. So if you look at the placement of leaves, they are whirled around the stem. There's one, there's the second, and the third. And each leaf is cut or divided into leaflets. If you look at the leaflets, you'll see that they're also toothed. So those characteristics identify the leaves of this plant. The last thing is looking at the flower. This is a great example of a regular flower. You'll notice that there are four petals, all the same size, color, and shape. This flower is a large flowered trillium. Let's put into practice what you have learned so far. First, look at the flower. Is it regular or irregular? If regular, how many petals or sepals do you see? How are the leaves arranged? Are they basal leaves or stem leaves? If stem leaves, are they arranged alternately, opposite, or world? What kind of leaf margin do the leaves have? Take a look. 
If you determined that this large flower trillium is a regular flower with three petals, the leaves are whirled around the stem, and they have an entire margin, you are correct. Let's try one more. The trout lily. What type of flower does it have? How many petals do you see? Does it have basal leaves or stem leaves? What is the leaf margin? If you determine that the trout lily is a regular flower with six parts, that it has basal leaves with entire leaf margins, you are correct. Well done. Thanks for tuning in today. Keep an eye out for future videos where I'll explain how to use the three characteristics we looked at today to identify wildflowers using this book called The Newcomb's Wildflower Guide. Thanks for tuning in again. See you soon.